trying new makeup video. I have so much great makeup that's been sent to me by such great brands and things that I've bought also that I have been so eager to share with y'all. I have stuff from LH Cosmetics, new stuff, new to me stuff from Persona. I have the new unlipsticks from Beauty Pie and, and, and I finally bought the blender cover from Monica Blunder Beauty. I actually got the most ideal shade for me in Zvi.25 and I am psyched to put all this on my face today. I also have questions on Instagram from y'all and they're fire today y'all. They're unhinged and I'm obsessed. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh yeah. So if there's anything that I've learned about the blender cover so far, I mean, other than the fact that I really, really like it, is that I can afford to prep my skin quite a bit in the ways that I actually like to. I love a really dewy, like almost glossy looking face, but that tends to interfere in negative ways with a lot of the makeup that I like to wear. It tends to be too slippy, but the blender cover is very pigmented, lots of saturated actual coverage, and unlike a lot of the balm foundations that I've tried in the past, it's actually pretty matte. So I can afford to do this. And that also means that I would recommend it for people with like combo to oily skin. This is all I'm going to need today in terms of complexion. I don't need to pull out like a concealer or anything. I might pull out a powder, but it is so beautifully lightweight. It's all New York blender cover, care wise. It is more coverage than all of them. It is more blurring than Kerwise. It's also even a little bit more matte than Kerwise. But like not powder matte, just not dewy. Does that make sense? I think it'll help for me to just apply this. This baby is pretty expensive, but you get 0.62 ounces and you need so little that I really feel like it's gonna last forever. Do you have a page with all your affiliate links we can use to shop? <laughs> Yeah, I can totally do that. I, you know, I'm getting pressured by companies all the time to use their version of it because pretty much any time you have an affiliate code or not an affiliate code, uh, you create a link through an affiliate platform. They're like, hey, you know, why don't you use our version of the LTK page or whatever. LTK is like to know it. It's the original version of that, that kind of like directory of all of your buying links. It's like a shoppable website kind of. It was created by Reward Style. Reward Style used to be like incredibly like snooty and exclusive and they finally accepted me <laughs> in all of my glory. But there've been a lot of spinoffs of that. So there's the magic links, shop my links. There's like a my shelf. There's like, yeah. So I will start linking all of those down below because I basically monetize through different platforms depending on what brands I'm using because some brands will have affiliate partnerships through like ShareASale and some of them will have affiliate partnerships through Magic Links and some of them will be on Howl and some of them will be on like Partnerize or Reward Style, um, Shop Style, Collective. Like there's a bunch of them. There's, you know, even Amazon. But yeah, I will. I'll start putting those links down there so that y'all can find them. It doesn't even like, I always feel kind of shady. It's almost like I'm asking for money, you know? So I just, I really appreciate that y'all even ask me that. Look at this, look at this. It's so pretty. And honestly, what finally did me in, in terms of buying this, like what made me finally do it was the account Whirl, W-H-O-O-R-L that I follow. She is like so breathtakingly beautiful and she does these really close up little like no makeup makeup kind of or low makeup makeup kind of application things on Instagram. I'm really finding my words today as you can tell. And I watch her use this like every day and I'm like, all right, I'll bite because you're pretty. <laughs> and I'm glad that I did. So yeah, you can see, even though this isn't like such, I don't know, I don't think that it's as quite like a dialed in match when I swatch it on my hand. I think that it looks fantastic on my face. Kind of reminds me of like the MAC NC15. Like that's how the MAC NC15 pot concealer behaves on me. It's like putting on a new layer of better skin. 
and wow does this tolerate powder so much better than other balm foundations that I've used because it's so much thinner and it's so much more pigmented and it does have like a, a drier texture to it so you just don't have to put as much on and so it's not going to soak up as much powder. I just oh boy the short that I posted where I'm wearing like the cream colored sweater and I mean my I have to admit like even in real life my skin looked fantastic that day it was because I was just wearing this some of the house labs powder and I had just spritzed it with the Tula finishing spray and I was like wow my skin my under eyes look awesome I've been using the Kate Somerville retinol it's the only retinol I've been using because I'm actually just back on Curology trying to get rid of all this acne but uh, the only retinol I've been using is underneath my eyes and that Kate Somerville retinol eye cream I've never been an eye cream person but this is like a very specifically useful eye cream you know because it's like a heavy dose of retinol for people who are just encountering a little bit more extra texture and aging around the eyes and stuff it's amazing it's amazing it makes my eyes look so youthful it's very youthful for making my eyes look youthful for the record anybody who's been watching my channel for a long 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 time and you're like was she always this weird yes i just stopped editing most of it out i'm just like i'm gonna leave it in I'll leave it in and let it be like an auto filter for people who can tolerate me. I did one time see like something on a forum that was like, I feel like she's always screaming at me and I like edit my own videos. I'm like, why am I screaming at me? <laughs> I am always screaming. Have you ever done extravagant Halloween makeup full face theme? I have always said I have two speeds. One, I don't care. Two, full cosplay. There is no in between for me. I do not half you know what a halloween situation actually right when my kid was born my husband bought us like scooby-doo costumes off the internet and that was like the first time i've ever done that like when i was a teenager i went like full donnie darko like i made myself like the full suit with like the skeleton on it and did my eyes and everything i had really short hair at the time and then it just kind of escalated from there i really wanted to be frank the bunny but like couldn't figure out how <laughs> Now I think I probably could, but like I have a two-year-old and that probably wouldn't work. Like I want, I've always wanted to dress up as full Frank the Bunny, but like I'm afraid someone would actually like shoot me or like arrest me, call the cops, something, because it's a terrifying Halloween costume, you know? Like it's terrifying. I would terrify people's children. I would terrify their dogs. Like it's a very scary costume. I did Princess Mononoke full like full full and i also it's a little bit contentious honestly because i bought uh like a native american headdress kind of thing from a costume shop to do it but i was like a lost boy one time from peter pan and i realized like in hindsight i'm like that doesn't that's not like that good of a look even though i have like this much native american in me still it's not a flex it's not it's not a good look but it was very mgmt at the moment I, the cultural appropriation of it all. I did 11 after the first season of Stranger Things and it was a Stranger Things themed Halloween party. I sewed the dress, I put on a bald cap and I cut a wig and glued the hair on so that it looked like a buzz cut, okay? I have no chill and there was like a period of time on my channel where I just made tons of flower crowns. I still have them. I'll go get a flower crown, hang on. Like for the record, I have never had any chill, okay? None whatsoever. None. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I moved this with me from Texas. Like I made this, like what? <sighs> what am I doing with my life? My grandmother would call me a bloomin' idiot. <laughs> and I think that I'm gonna do Abby Kadabby this year. Oh, and, 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 and. I did a full Halloween get ready with me with another flower crown on my channel at one point. I don't know where that one ended up. I do still have all of them. It was of Amma from Sharp Objects. If you haven't seen that, go see it. It is something that will live rent free in your brain for the rest of your life. So, you know, bear that in mind. But like Amma is just, ugh. Just the best character, so well acted, so terrifying, such a good victim villain. Like, she's so good. She's so good! Anyway, the answer to your question is yes. That was a very long uh, answer to that question. And I think that my blender cover has had the opportunity to dry down, A, eh? don't you think, maybe? Your favorite aesthetic that you don't actually participate in, goth, cottagecore, etc. Oh, like, the really satisfying, 
um, maximal uh, kawaii. Like, just like full, like, Japanese street style, everything from like gyaru to like the decadent cases and everything like. I don't start because I know I wouldn't be able to stop, but I mean it does kind of make its way into like some of the kitsch in my personal style. That is the thing I'm constantly like, no khaki, no khaki, we're already going broke on clothes, no. <laughs> but I love watching that kind of content, it is my ASMR. Like the people with like the keeps, the like different multicolored gaming keyboards and their setups and like, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, next we're gonna go in with the LH Cosmetics Shaping Light Desert Glow. LH Cosmetics sent me all three. That's sort of the desert glow, there you go. Then the warm glow and then the cool glow. They're so pretty, they're so freaking pretty. And the thing that I like is just that that bronzy one is not just like, I don't know, it's not just like a wash of color. It has a committed bronze to it and for that reason you don't have to put a whole bunch of it on and you can actually use it as a bronzer. It's not just a shimmer goo. I just, I can't say enough about LH Cosmetics. LH Cosmetics make and also Persona has really started impressing me lately. Those have been like my, my top three lately. Um, use this buffing complexion brush from Well People. Answer another question. Do you match your makeup to your outfit or your outfit to your makeup or pick a vibe and go. It's about what I'm excited about. I find that my sanity really thrives on me having something to be inspired by and for me that can be makeup. It can, it's like kind of bad because it, it sort of does thrive on something being new but that can be a new idea not just a new garment or a new piece of makeup you know. So I mean that's sometimes I go on Pinterest and I get excited about a new way to put something together or to accomplish a look rather than a new thing to buy. So it's whatever I'm excited about. If I'm excited about a way of doing my makeup or a piece of makeup that I'm going to use, then I let that kind of inspire me or the other way around. If I have like a new garment or a new way that I want to wear a garment or like an outfit idea or a concept, then that's kind of where I start, you know? I used to try and really fit myself into this idea of trying to like optimize the way that I dress. Like, oh, I need to pick a genre or an aesthetic or whatever. To be honest, the whole like aesthetic thing was created by either like early, like young millennials or like early Gen Z. And I feel like it's very constricting. Like it, it really hampers my creativity personally because I don't like to think of myself as like packaged within an aesthetic. And I think that that can kind of make you feel like you're doing something wrong or not accomplishing it enough or you know what I mean? Because I, I remember being in high school and like yes there was like this like indie crowd and like the you know the music goers the show goers and things like that but everybody had a different vibe. That was encouraged. I remember how much I cringed out when I first started seeing like YouTube videos of people showing how to do scene hair, I was like, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are well-kept secrets, okay? And you're supposed to go figure it out for yourself and you're supposed to find your own twist on it. But then again, you know, the optimization around that has also helped for us to not look quite as foolish while doing these things. But at the same time, I just think that like the whole like aesthetic thing, it can turn on itself, right? It's a great way to get inspiration to, you know, see if someone has already defined a way that you're feeling and you know they maybe they can like lead you towards cool things to buy or to wear or to you know to try but it can be really limiting too because you become a little bit more reliant on imitating someone else's style instead of living within your own paradigm and I mean I have fluctuated back and forth in those kinds of like cycles in my life and I find that the happiest I am is when I arrive back in a place of like using myself as my own reference point you know I do like to gather inspiration inspiration from everything, from everything. I mean my kids wardrobe to like people I see on the street to like you know colors I see in nature and things I see on Pinterest, men, women, whoever you know. At the same time I do always try to remember that like it, when it comes to a place in my brain where I'm comparing myself to someone or trying to find whether or not I'm doing it right, quote unquote, instead of asking whether I like something, then that means I need to come back to center, <laughs> you know, because I'm kind of doing it for the wrong reasons. Can we talk about that bronzer? Can we talk about it? I feel like this is just so easy to sleep on because it's packaged like a regular shimmer goo, but it's such an effective bronzer. It kind of reminds me of like the Bronzino or like the Daniel Sandler, like the Moon Glow or the Sun Glow or whatever, because it has that same effect, but it's so, 
bouncy, dewy, gorgeous. It's a lot like the Bionic Bronzer from Milk Makeup because, you know, it has that same kind of nice dry down. Yeah, yep, yep. Might be a much more affordable way to do that. And she's doing a friends and family on her website right now, I think. Okay, we're going to go in with eyes next before I go in with blush because I have some cool blush things, but I want to establish my eye look first. So actually I'm gonna powder first, just underneath my eyeballs here. And we're gonna be going in with the new Golden 20s from Linda Hallberg. And it's just, I mean, is that not the most like useful looking palette for a pale neutral girl? It's gonna be ashy as heck on, you know, somebody with deep skin, but these are all things that I can use straight from the pan. It kind of reminds me of the Rose Quartz palette from Aether, you know, because it kind of goes pink, but then it also goes gray. Hello? Hello, you get the picture. And I'm gonna use the, I was gonna use the Make powder, but man, I am really into this House Labs. Let's do that. I like both of them, but like, I'm more excited about House Labs at the moment. Candy corn, yay or nay, I hate candy corn. It's also got wheat in it, so I can't eat it anyway. What traditions are you looking forward to making for holidays with Simon? If you're new here, Simon is my cutie little two-year-old. He just turned two and he is, the best. This morning he went from pronouncing monkey mamai, which is what he's been saying for a very long time, to actually saying monkey, monkey. Like very proud of his diction and how he is making so much progress all the time. He's learning new numbers and letters and songs and he's just, he's incredible. He's just so awesome and so exciting. So something that we recently, I don't know, my mom was here, we were talking about it. I remember my husband's like cousin's children who are, you know, anywhere from like five to eight years older than Simon. I remember watching them on holidays, mainly on Christmas, get all of these presents and just absolutely turn into little zombies. Like they just get so overwhelmed by all the stimulus it, that they just, black, it's almost like they black out. Like they just go into a fugue state of opening presents where it's just like so much. And when I was a kid, I literally would make myself sick on Christmas Eve because of just knowing what was coming and knowing how exciting and all the, you know, all the buildup of everything. My husband said the same thing. Mike's like, I used to make myself literally throw up because I was just so like anxious for Christmas. And that's, to me, there's gotta be a better way. I'm not gonna judge anybody for the way that they do their holidays or whatever, but there was this thing that kind of happened because my mom was here for Simon's birthday. By the way, I'm going with this. It's like this gray, gray taupe. My mom was here and uh, I don't know, we, we opened up a bunch of his presents at dinner on his actual birthday. And the first thing we realized was that a two-year-old doesn't understand we're going to open this and then we're not going to play with it. And then we're gonna open another thing and then we're not going to play with it. And it was just like way too much of us trying to like impress on him this very strange construct of like opening presents at a birthday, you know? Because he was just like, this doesn't make sense. I just wanna open this one present and play with it. Like stop making me open more things. I just wanna go back to the first thing and look at it, you know? So we just saved them. And then, you know, over the next few days, he would open like a present every other day and get really, really pumped about it. Our neighbors brought some by and stuff like that. And so he had a chance to open a few presents over the course of like a week. And that made so much more sense. And I looked at my mom, I said, mom, Hanukkah makes a lot of sense. You know, a present a day for eight days. And like, yes, they build maybe, you get like the biggest one at the end or something, but you get a chance to really appreciate each present. You get a lot more of these really nice kind of lower, woo, bye, lower key ceremonies of, you know, giving them the gift and stuff. And they just get to actually like appreciate them and also not go into like total, overload. And my mom kind of like cooked on that for a while. You know, she, she internalized that thought process for a while and came back to it a couple days later and was like, yeah, I mean, maybe it's worth doing something like the 12 days of Christmas. And, you know, instead of having it be this huge thing that gives my kid like a, basically puts him in like a, a strange coma on Christmas and it's just like done and then it's over. Like instead have it be something that we start doing and like open it almost like an advent calendar, except, you know, real presents. 
and how cool that would be because he just he really is at this age where when you give him something he really wants to like study it and get a chance to like understand it really well it's not about it's not about more for him it's about like really just immersing himself in that one thing and getting to concentrate on it and i'm all about respecting that so I think that that's one of the big things that I want to try and do. And it's going to be hard because, you know, actual Christmas day, we're going to be with family. Like, so he's still going to get a bunch more stuff on like Christmas because of, you know, his family. And I'm not complaining about that. We're very, very lucky. But it will give us the chance to just sort of mitigate that so that he understands that this is like a gift giving season and like that's important but it's also important to all be together and it's important to appreciate what you have you know it could be like a book or you know a, like a stuffed animal or whatever it doesn't have to be some elaborate thing but for him to just appreciate these things and have him not feel super overwhelmed stuff like that probably so i've just been working with this one color it's this really pretty like soft taupey gray it's super pretty it's just really because it's very desaturated in its shade but it's very intensely like very consistently pigmented goes on in just a very luxurious way just such a pretty like velvety formula it's very blurring long form thoughts on socks preferred cut fabric pattern or plain toe heel wear etc well my mother owned a yarn store for like eight years and uh she made me a lot of socks so there's that. I also am a big smart wool fan. Love me some smart wool. I like Bombas. We have a lot of, we're a Bombas family, but the one big error that I made with Bombas was, don't be tempted by the variety pack. Buy them all in one color because when they come out of the laundry, you are not gonna wanna match them up and you will never end up wearing matching socks, okay? Unless you're a Virgo and you're like, oh man, can't wait to match these socks with their partners. I live for it. I, you know, no, not me. <laughs> I should have just bought them all in the same color because I literally never wear two matching Bombas, ever. There is that, but man, I love their little slippers. We are a Bombas slippers family. My kid didn't want to wear them at first and then he figured out that they have grips on the bottom of them and that it makes him like this agile, juking superhero and now he wants to wear them all the time. We're like, you wanna wear your slippers? He's like, yeah, I love that. And then I actually love a good statement sock. I do. I do, I have like some tie-dyed socks that I like to wear. I also have like the low cut ones for, um, you know, sneakers and stuff, but I don't run anymore. I just do yoga, so. Mainly it's just about comfort at this point. Using this kind of dark, cool gray, it's, it's cool, so to speak. I do think that I wanna kind of warm this whole thing up a little. The Art Deco vibes can go quite, quite cool in this. So I'm gonna take that big fluffy guy and I'm gonna go into like this nice pretty brown that has like a little touch of rosiness to it. Oh, Ted has entered the chat. If you had to eat any of your blushes, which one would it be? Eat? Okay, so the most appetizing color that I think that there is, is like a really bright fuchsia. So it's not necessarily something that I own a lot of blushes in, but that is like the color that actually physically appetizes me, makes me want to like go eat tropical fruit. I used to have this one from Anami that actually like fully appetized me. It was like the prettiest kind of like translucent fuchsia. I just don't think I own one like that anymore because it's not a color that I wear very well. That is my answer. <laughs> I'll put that one on the screen if I can find it. What is your new P.O. box? I'd like to send you a gift. I do not have a P.O. box. I am not going to get a P.O. box. It's for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want gifts from viewers. Um, it's just, it's kind of too much of like a, a like, burden for me as far, like emotionally. I think that it's a really nice thing for people to do, but it's just, it, it's gotten really hairy in the past. It's just a weird conflict of interest. And also I live in a very small town and I don't really want anyone to know specifically where I live. Do you really believe in astrology? <laughs> oh no. Um, yikes, okay. Well, you know what? I think that people take everything way too seriously. I think that we take life way too seriously, okay? Like, do I believe that the moon has control over the tides and that my period 
is influenced by the phases of the moon and that our productivity follows those cycles because that's kind of the way that like, you know, gravity works or whatever. Science. Yeah, like low key, it makes as much sense as anything else. I grew up very like, you know, just kind of like default Christian and that stuff doesn't make any sense to me. Like someone can read my thoughts and it's like gonna judge me at the end of the day on like whether or not my thoughts were impure. Like that's kind of screwed up. Like I think that's a weird thing to put in a kid's head. So um, been been trying to like unpack that for like the, the last 35 years. So, you know, different things mean different things to different people. And I think that astrology is just, it's what I always say. Humans try to find a semblance of control in the universe by detecting and identifying patterns. And I think that it's a fun thing to do. And I think that it's harmless. And that's where I'm going to stop or else I will get into like my whole like very nihilistic worldview. And it's, it's, it gets bleak. I think it's funny, but I think a lot of people would think it was very bleak. So let's find a color to work with here. So I did just do my bedroom eyes tutorial as like a literal like 20 second video because it's so quick. It's such a quick tutorial that there was no point in like actually making it a whole thing. But uh, yeah, if you wanna see that, that's where that is. What is this? I don't wear yellow gold like that very well. Let's see about this pink. I mean, that's fine. I'm wearing pink. Mm, I don't know. I kind of want to do something other than like literally matching my outfit. What if I just did that all over my lid? Yeah, matte brown. Ooh, moody. I do have a couple of textural toppers in that little basket that I was planning to try and incorporate today. So I'll pull those out in a bit, but I wanna go ahead and get this like established here. But yeah, I think that like the main thing is, <laughs> I believe in everything. And as long as you're not hurting anybody, if you think that you saw the Virgin Mary on the top of a mountain in Mexico, then you saw the Virgin Mary on the top of a mountain in Mexico. Like who the heck am I in this simulation that we live in to tell you that you didn't? And anybody who says that they can is taking life way too seriously. Like everybody needs to just calm down, laugh more. Live, laugh, love. No, I'm not trying to spiritually bypass anybody's, you know, stuff that's going on, but I also don't think that it's anybody's job to suffer when it's not their turn to suffer. Like the, the world has to have some semblance of balance. We can't just like try and seek out suffering and constantly try and like unpack truth because there's no such thing. There's only people's opinions. And if you don't agree with my opinion, then that's just your opinion, bro. That's okay. Friends can disagree. Friends can disagree and stay friends. It's, it's not, it's not unheard of. There are no rules. I like that eye so far. Can you do a travel edit? Like what you'd bring on a plane? Thanks. I have two of those. Um, I have two like travel makeup bag videos and they're very like quick and concise, but I mean, I can do an updated one if you, like that if you would want that. What discontinued product, food, clothing, beauty, etc., would you bring back? That's a great question. That's a great question. And on uh while we while we do that, let's do some blush here. We've got some persona blushes. They sent me three of these. These are their multi-sticks, their blush multi-sticks. I have here Teddy, Kiss, and Bubble. Teddy is a warm nude. Whoa. Kiss is a candy apple red, so you know that that's not going to be the one I'm using today. And then Bubble, I swatched in the last video, and that one is a really awesome, like, Dior pink. Uh, we'll find that one if we need to. But for right now, I'm going to go in with Teddy. My friend Aaron Dye says that it is one of his faves. And everything turns pink on me, so maybe this will go a little bit pink. Eh? Discontinued things. Well, that's nice. It breaks my heart that Aether has discontinued so many things because her crushed diamond highlighters were like the best thing in the world. They were so incredible. It was like a giant pan of gorgeous Pat McGrath eyeshadow. <laughs> like 
it was just very underrated and then by the time everybody figured it out she was like uh i'm not making them anymore why didn't you get excited about them in real time you know that was an unfortunate one i wish i could get my hands on some of, obviously i think this is like one of the most common like laments is discontinued mac shades because i have seen pictures of myself right after i went to the mac counter on my like 18th birthday man some of the blushes that i used it was some special edition packaging that was kind of white and pearly and i remember cosmic was one of the eyeshadows in it but there was this like bright coral blush and that was when i fell in love with blush and i know that there are going to be some really great almost like archivists out there because there are people who've been using mac for so long that they have this like archival memory of everything that's from them and i truly like believe that someone will go, oh, it's this one, and like, you know, find it, but that doesn't mean that I can actually get my hands on it, which is saddy sad. Also, like, the entire brand of Bite Beauty, so, so freaking sad. Like, this is the time of year that I would be pulling out their matte lipsticks, especially Chai, but unfortunately that's just not my reality today i'm gonna go in with this this is the bare minerals coral cloud blush i just got it got coral on the brain all of a sudden so i this is such an underrated formula their bounce and blur formula mm. 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 it's a lot like the mac glow play blushes not quite as like squishy but very very similar Pity. Well, now that I've done that, I really feel like what it needs is bubble because it needs to be like awakened right here on the top of my cheeks. But knowing that, let's go ahead and finish with my eyeballs. I wanna do some exciting things. I wanna do some exciting things. So I have a pencil, a white pencil here from LH. I'm going to use that on my inner corner. I have to try and think about some other things that have been discontinued. Mainly, man, oh, the Bite Beauty Foundation. So good. The powder, so good. Oh, the lipstick that I wore to my wedding, Lancome Nuit et Joux. I found it on Lisa Aldridge's channel at one point. And they make it in a lip gloss now, but I still, I, I can't find it in a lipstick anymore and mine, you know, expired. I got married almost four years ago. Yeah, man, such a good color, such a good color. It's like my favorite lipstick color, but alas. I've been really enjoying the very, very bright inner corner. Even if I put something on top of it, I love having that little bit there of white, you know, as a backing for it. So actually what I pulled today is Lust from Danessa Myricks. And I'm kind of wondering if that's gonna have, I think that's the shift that I want. Yes, I think that that's the shift that I want. I have three of these that have no pigment to the actual like serum portion of the formula and just provide a really nice shift. And this one is Lust. And I think I'm remembering that Lust is actually kind of matte. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. So I pulled this, this is Magic Mushroom from Hollow Grave, loose flaky glitter in the same color. Yeah, it's kind of hard to not get it every freaking wear, but I don't know, I think it's worth it. And it'll stick onto the Genesis Lyrics pretty well while it's drying. <laughs> it's all under my eyes, I can see it. And it's there for keeps, that's just the way that that is. Yeah. There are responsible ways to do that, different than the way that I just did it, which would be to, you know, mix it with something before you apply it to your eyeballs, but am I responsible? Not historically. Hey! As my child would say, bubbos. 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 So this is actually something that I, I think I have a YouTube shorts coming out that's talking about this, but like the difference between highlighting and using a neon blush, because I really feel like highlighting is kind of dying. I, I understand wanting the light to hit and wanting to draw attention to your cheekbone. That's the one, but I think that it can be done in a much more finessed way. 
And it's not the same effect, but like I also think that highlight on the top of the cheek actually like blanks it out sometimes. And this looks a lot more effective in person. I am declaring highlighter dead. And I am declaring neon blush as the new highlighter. Cheekbone, at least. So that's Bubble. I'm gonna throw on my eyeliner and my mascara and my brows. <laughs> my brows need to happen. Like they need to happen yesterday. <laughs> feeling herself. Don't tell the church. Yeah, I am really into this. I'm digging it. Now the question becomes, what in the heck are we gonna do on my lips? So I did pull this, but I think it might be a little bit much for today. What do we think? What do we think? I don't know, maybe we should just do it and see. So this is the new one from Beauty Pie. This happens to be the shade, I think it's called Strike While It's Hot. And it's this awesome, like matte coral, led the way. Holy potatoes. I don't think I'd leave the house like this. <laughs> it's a great color, not for this makeup look. You know what I think this needs? The occasion does not strike often, but when it does, it's very specific. It is time for the Gloss Luxe from Tom Ford in Love Lust. Yes, because it's like that same Dior pink, that same bubble pink, that same pink that I'm wearing. But on my lips, it's gonna be translucent instead of it being like the whole look, you know? All right, here we go. It's a fantastic formula. It smells like vanilla, liquid lip balm. My lips are a little bit red <laughs> from removing the other one, but now it makes me feel like I need more of the actual, like the bubble or Dior. Either way, let's go Dior. <laughs> Cause we're already here. I can hear it in the comments right now. People being like khaki. I don't need to make this match my outfit. Also khaki covers her face in the exact color she's wearing. Putting it in my eye look to bring it all together. Because you can be a chic flamingo even in the fall, okay? The one thing we don't have is uh, any contour. So let's do that real quick. This is very Miami. It's happening all very quickly. Also, those multi-chrome liners from Kaleidos are pretty awesome. Look at that. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go with just a little bit more powder because I feel like we got a little bit pink, mainly from all like the wiping. And that somehow arrived at kind of a chill vibe today. Like all, all the stuff, everything that I have going on still arrived in kind of a chill place. Well, there you have it. Let's do a quick and dirty on everything that I just put on my face because a lot of it is new to me, new to my channel, new to y'all. So Monica Blunder, this is something that I literally forget about the moment I get done putting it on. And then throughout the day, I keep looking at myself and going, why do I look so fantastic? <laughs> why do I look so effortless? Why does my skin look so good? It's because I only put this where I need it. It's kind of like the Sneaky Balm in that respect, but it's got a lot more coverage than the Sneaky Balm and it's a lot drier than the Sneaky Balm. So I highly recommend this even for people who are not used to going, <laughs> 
happily towards, excitedly towards something that calls itself a balm. A lot of times if you ha do have combination or oily skin, the word balm is very terrifying. I would venture to say someone like Jackie Ina could get use out of a formula like this. Like, it is going to adapt to whatever skin prep you use. You can get this very matte. You can get this very long wearing if you want to, and you can also prep the heck out of your skin and get something really like nice and skin-like out of it. So I like it a whole lot, like a whole lot, a whole lot. I think it's absolutely beautiful, super easy to work with, very intuitive, worth every penny. Instant love, can't stop using it. These cheek sticks, the multi-sticks from Persona. I mean, again, this is not going to be my color anytime soon, but the other two, Bubble and Teddy, totally gorgeous. I really do recommend Bubble for people who don't want to spend the money on the Dior. And they also have a powder version of it. So that or Dreamwalk from Kaleidos, you know, you don't necessarily need to go and spend the money on Dior. I personally really love it, but you don't have to do that, you know? And also, I don't know if I have like ever run across something that's this color in a lip gloss like this. But I mean, I could also not blame you at all if you weren't interested in it. You know what I mean? If you saw that and you were like, and pass. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. It is for people who like that really like neon pink that kind of leans like just ever so slightly purple. Like that's a little bit purple. And so I personally love that. I like to be able to work in like a tonal palette on my face, especially when I am kind of working with as much texture and everything is I have going on today. But also the eyeshadow palette from LH Cosmetics, this new golden twenties, this is a very good alternative to the, you know, the Aether Rose Quartz palette. It's very, it reminds me a lot of it. A lot of the same tones, a little bit different in the textures. It's going to give you a little bit less variety, but probably a little bit more wapow on some of the like metallics. And I think that it's a really great basics palette for people like me who are pale and neutral. It's just a really good straight from the pan formula because everything, like I said, it's very blurring, but the colors themselves are really desaturated. So you can go in with reckless abandon and really build them evenly and not feel like you're going to end up with something really Really, really dramatic really quickly that runs away from you. So love this for that. The other things weren't really new, but if you are new, if this is your first video, like you probably aren't familiar with these. I don't love Lust. I forgot about that. I like Crazy For You the best. And that is why I went in on top of it with Mushroom Magic. I called it Magic Mushroom. Other way around. Mushroom Magic from Hollow Grave. The best thing to remember, especially when it comes to, you know, these indie brands and stuff, when you see these really amazing, like, galactic sparkles and stuff, is that there's really a finite amount of the ways that a multi-chrome can behave. There's like only so many shifts that exist out there under the sun, right? There's like a gold green, there's like an orange green, there's like that oil slick purple green. And so if you have a bunch of them and they're all in different textures, you can actually do like a tonal eye look or a tonal anything look really using all of the same shift just in different textures, which is kind of what we did today. So I worked with, like I said, Lust, which has the same kind of shift as as mushroom magic and the same kind of shift as tourmaline here from the Kaleidos eyeliners. So yeah, I mean, you know, swatch and experiment with the ones that you have, but there is a, a, just a really cool kind of freedom to that of saying like, well, I, even though it is an insane, like I said, like intergalactic kind of color, it is still only one, technically one type of multi-chrome, like this green, orange pink that I used and so I just used three different textures in that same color on top of stuff that was already just very tonal and like skin native for me and then I added just a touch 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 of this one which is called limelight so you can see that one is kind of a green and I just put that one like right underneath it it's pretty easy to get creative with these because like nothing looks bad it just looks cool you know so yeah I think that the main thesis is just that like I am so happy in this last kind of half of this year that I have not just like chosen to try brands that are like, you know, they've been on my radar for a while, but they're sort of new to me, but also that they've chosen me in a lot of ways to like, you know, after I make a video, they'll send me a bunch of their stuff so that I get to try even more of it. Make Beauty, LH Cosmetics, Persona, Beauty Pie, like these brands have made really innovative formulas that like enable this kind of excitement for me because this is, this is me in a nutshell. Like this is a full vibe and that is where I always want to arrive by the time I'm done. I don't assign myself any kind of aesthetic, like any particular one. 
Although I, I think I would probably call myself some kind of maximalist at the end of the day. But like the main thing for me is to totally embody whatever it is I'm doing that day to make sure I feel like it's a complete thought. And I don't even, I don't know where I'm going most of the time until I get there, so. Thank you for following me on this journey. I absolutely adore this look. I think it's so much fun. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love y'all so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.